Uh, so, Dr. Sanjay Mukherjee, uh, I read in Plato's theory of mimesis that he has levied some serious charges on poets and poetry. Would you please elaborate a, a bit on uh, these charges? Yeah, uh, you know, Dr. Bharat, uh, in the 1930s, mid-1930s, there was a philosopher called A.N. Whitehead, mm -hmm. who had said that all subsequent Western philosophy, mm -hmm. they are footnotes, as a footnotes to Plato. Now, therefore, the charges that Plato levies against mm -hmm. poets and poetry, it also seems that in the Western critical context, we must begin with Plato's charges. Mm -hmm. Significantly, so we must, I mean, look at what are these charges, charges exactly. Yes. what these charges are. Okay. First of all, these charges are like poetry, he says, is inspirational and not rational. Okay. Which means that poets create in a state of frenzy, mm -hmm. which is not a very good state of mind, okay. according to Plato. And therefore, this frenzy is wholly outside reason. Okay. Outside reason. And it leads to the arousal of emotions, which, which is inappropriate, mm -hmm. which, which is uh, ethically not right, morally not right. And uh, it includes certain, certain wrongs. Okay. For, for example, uh, certain harmful depiction. Mm -hmm. That like gods are depicted in a certain derogatory manner, yes. which does not really inspire the devotees mm -hmm. of the gods, and uh, and there and of course uh, uh, in in his famous uh, text Iron, mm -hmm. he would also say there are other inappropriacies. For example, does a charioteer, charioteer mm -hmm. that is, mm -hmm. uh, know better about how to run a chariot or does a poet know better about okay, it? Yeah. <laughs> so, and he concludes that mm -hmm. obviously the poet is not the proper person mm -hmm. who can disseminate this kind of a knowledge. Okay, okay. And uh, therefore it is, it is then dangerous to mm -hmm. follow poets who then spread such inaccuracies okay. and thereby they corrupt the soul of the okay. people. Okay, fine. Can now come to therefore what Plato thinks about poets. Poets, yeah, fine. And and what kind of inappropriate uh, actions mm -hmm. or inappropriate consequences as a, arise from the poets. Okay, fine. Okay, and and uh, for example, they are imitators. Okay, they are mere copiers, mm -hmm. and therefore it's it's not right. Mm -hmm. uh, they are. As we have already mentioned, they are immoral. Okay. Poets are immoral okay. because they further immoral depictions, okay. immoral representations. Uh, poets are possessed. Okay. They work in a sense in in in, a, in stance in 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 frenzy. Mm -hmm. That is also not proper. Uh, what is more, that this this frenzy it seems to pass on to the viewers, readers, listeners, listeners, which is very harmful. Yeah. And this should not happen, happen you know. Yes. And, and uh, they are liars, according to Plato, poets are liars because of two primary reasons. Mm -hmm. One is that, and he was shocked at it, Plato mm -hmm. was quite shocked. One is that the gods are represented in a very false manner. Mm -hmm. Gods should remain as gods, okay. better than human beings, mm -hmm. but they are represented as like human beings or sometimes lesser than human beings okay. or evil human beings. Mm -hmm. So that is one aspect. And secondly, he believes his ultimate real world is an unchanging world. Okay. He was shocked that how can human beings depict a certain world which is like the mortal world, a changing world. Okay. Human agency actually has no control mm -hmm. over that ultimate reality. Okay. And that was, poets do that. Mm -hmm. Poets bring about a change in okay. the unchanging world through their depiction. depiction. And this was absolutely unpardonable for Plato. For Plato. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.